Hi guys, welcome back to Programming with Pex. In today's video, we're gonna go over CSS positioning properties. So static, relative, absolute, fixed, and sticky. And by the end of it, you should have a really great understanding of what they all are and what they do. Let's get started. All right, so let's start off with a quick definition. So the position property specifies the type of positioning that's gonna be used on an element. And this allows that element to be placed around the website in different ways. Now, when it comes to positioning, there are two different types. The first is called static type positioning. And this tells the element to position itself in the normal flow of the document. So that's the natural position of block elements on the page. And if you'd like to see a video on display properties, I'll link it above and below right now. The second type is called relative type positioning. So what that does is it tells the element to be positioned relative to themselves or to their parent or to the viewport, which is the browser window. When you're positioning a relative type, you're going to be using what's called an offset. So that's top, bottom, left, right. And you can give it a set you know, number of pixels, let's say 10 pixels left whatever it is. A really important feature of relative types is that it creates a positioning context for its children. So what does positioning context mean? In this graphic that I made, the purple box is the browser, the green box is a relative element, so that's an element that you have set a position relative on, and within the green box, we have a yellow child element, which is positioned absolute. Because the green element is set to relative, it sets a positioning context for any of its children. Instead of the yellow box positioning itself based on the purple browser box, it will now be positioned based on the green parent box. So if you say left 20 pixels, it will move 20 pixels from the left side of the green box and not the left side of the purple browser box. I hope that made sense. <laughs> so we're gonna go through the different positioning types one by one. We'll start with static. Uh, for the CSS, it's really nothing too complex. I've just got some styling for the boxes. There are three boxes next to each other, and we're just gonna see how they all react differently. With static, it's just the default positioning for all elements and the element is just gonna be put in the normal flow of things. So really nothing, nothing crazy about this. Next, we're gonna take a look at relative. So it looks, it looks the same. However, there is one key difference, and that difference is that you can add an offset like top, bottom, left, right. So let's add a little offset and see what happens. Here we can see that the top of the element is being offset by 20 pixels, relative to where it would have been in the normal flow. Notice that the positions of the boxes on either side have not changed at all. When you offset an element's position with position relative, the space that it takes up does not move and it won't affect anything around it. The offset that's being applied is relative to itself and where it would have been. Next, let's look at absolute. Now we can see things are a little bit different. So the absolute element is taken out of the normal flow and it leaves no space behind. What this does is actually allow the gray box that would have been here to slide over, where with relative, that space was preserved. With absolute, it disappears and the surrounding elements will act accordingly. So the other gray box is actually just behind the absolute, the green absolute box. Another important distinction is that an absolute element will be offset relative to its nearest relative type position parent. <laughs> That's a mouthful. So again, we're going back to the positioning context. So currently, let's say if I add some offset to this absolute, if I save now, it's going to be positioning itself based on the browser. So it's top, so it's you know top 20 pixels and right 20 pixels. However, if I add position relative to this box container that goes around it, then it's gonna set a new positioning context for all of its children, meaning the green absolute element. 
So you can see when I save that now, instead of the absolute element being positioned around the browser, it looks for its nearest parent that has relative, which is now this box container, and it's going to be positioning itself based on that. So top 20 pixels and right 20 pixels based on this box. Next, we're going to look at fixed. So with fixed, you can see that it has the same behavior as absolute, where it's taken out of the normal flow and it leaves no space. So these gray boxes, they're going to be pushed next to each other because there's no space in there anymore. However, the main difference is that the element is positioned relative to the viewport itself instead of its nearest parent that has relative type positioning. So with fixed, you can see that it's just going to stay at the top left no matter where I am. So this is often used for nav bars. And just like with relative and absolute, you can add offset. So let's say left 20 pixels. And now it's going to be moving over to the left 20 pixels or top 50 pixels, let's say. And anytime I scroll, it's still going to be fixed and positioned relative to the viewport, which is the browser window itself. Finally, we have sticky. So with position sticky, it's really a hybrid between relative and fixed position. The element is treated relative positioned until it crosses a specific threshold that you set. And then at that point, it's going to be treated as fixed. So in the styling, I have for the sticky, I have top zero. So when the sticky element hits top zero of the browser, it's going to then start becoming fixed. So as is, it just moves just like a relative position. And then as soon as it hits the top of the browser, it's going to become fixed just like that. So you can see I'm moving up and down, I'm scrolling up and down, and it's basically position fixed. And we can set where that threshold is by just changing the top. So I'm going to set 200 pixels here. And so that means that at the top, as soon as it, it's 200 pixels away from the top of the browser, then it's going to become fixed. And that's 200 pixels. All right, to summarize, today we went over the different types of positioning properties that there are. The first is called static. So that's the default positioning for all elements. And the element will just stay in its normal flow. Next, we have relative. So with relative, it's going to stay in the normal flow of the document, meaning surrounding elements will not take its place. And if you use any offset, like the top, bottom, left, right, it's going to be positioned relative to itself. So where it would have been. Next, we have absolute. So the element is going to be taken out of the normal document flow, meaning the surrounding elements will take its space. And when you use an offset, it's going to be relative to its nearest relative type positioned parent. Next, we have fixed. So again, the element is taken out of the normal flow. And if you use the offset, it's going to be relative to the viewport, so the browser itself. And finally, sticky, which is a mix of relative and fixed positioning. And that is CSS positioning in a nutshell. I hope this video helped clear up any confusion you may have. Uh, and if you do have any questions, then just leave them in the comments down below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you did find this video helpful, then consider dropping a like, as it really helps the channel out. And for the next bunch of videos that I'm going to be releasing, they're all going to be on these core fundamental CSS topics that can sometimes be just a little bit trickier, but you absolutely have to understand them. So be sure to subscribe for more content just like this. On that note, thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one.